Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I think I have been given the last chance because we should not again forget this is the old is gold. We have been all grown up using and practicing sulfonyl ureas all over our practices in last two to three decades. In the analogy with cricket, I would say that class is permanent and form may be temporary. So these molecules have a class in itself and we cannot forget these molecules in the armamentarium of treatment of type 2 diabetes. In the next 10 minutes, I will take you to the evidences and what is the science and where we should not forget in the, you know, more fashionable molecules which are available uh, nowadays. I would not say th those are not effective in certain set of patients, but we have, you know, certain set of patients where these molecules would be better suited than the other molecules or maybe in combination met with metformin. If we see the oral uh, anti-diabetic drugs, if we see uh, they still dominate the pattern uh, of the treatment of type 2 diabetes and we have used sulfonyl ureas as an important molecule for decades and along with the combination of metformin or after metformin, they still remain the mainstay of treatment in the Indian subcontinent where, you know, cost is the constraint and you need to consider uh, those things. Now we have uh, newer sulfonyl ureas or second generation sulfonyl ureas like glimipride and uh, modified release glycolyzide, which are you know, have overcome those side effects of weight gain and hypoglycemia, which we were, you know, fearing using these molecules in addition with metformin or alone or titrating these molecules to higher dosage, which, which has now also become the things of the past once we are using these molecules. And if we see that the context of Indian population, two out of Indian people with type 2 diabetes fail to achieve a HbA1c control. This is the ICMR in study. And if we see the control of HbA1c again is the major concern if we have to prevent the uh, long-standing micro and macrovascular complications. Globally, 17% of the patients had HbA1c less than 7%. But if we see in India, HbA1c more than 9% in 36% of the patients. So we need a molecule which can quickly bring down the HbA1c so that the long-term complications are much less. And if we see the, we have talked about various molecules, where guidelines and various subset of patients. But if we see the glycemic efficacy of sulfonyl ureas, they stand out far ahead of other molecules. If we see in comparison with the DPP-4, SGLT-2, sulfonyl ureas can reduce the HbA1c to the tune of 1 to 2%. In comparison, in combination with metformin also, they keep their potency and they have a HbA1c reduction potential of 1.7%. And if we see the various trial-grade effectiveness of commonly used four medications, after metformin, insulin, glargine, liraglutide, and glimipride, and cetagliptin. Sulfonyl urea still have a lower treatment failure as compared to cetagliptin, and the proportion of patients who achieved target HbA1c of less than 7% was 72% as compared to the other molecules. They, they have a unique mode of action which is not required, and then the in combination of metformin, they have a synergistic action, you know, they improve the beta cell function and increase the insulin synthesis and metformin as reducing the insulin resistance and increasing the HB uh, hepatic glucose output. If we see the journey of sulfonyl urea, we, we should concentrate here. After the advanced study, the CV safety of glycolyzide modified release was you know, documented in 2008 and TOFCA-IT, which is an, another uh, study where it was compared with pyoglitazone. And we know that the latest study, Carolina with Linagliptin versus glimipride, the CV safety of glimipride was compared and it was found to be non-inferior. And what do the guidelines uh, say regarding the use of sulfonyl ureas? If we see the consensus recommendations on sulfonyl urea co and combination in the management by the International Task Force, modern sulfonyl ureas, glimipride and glycolyzide modified release are effective and safe in agents in patients who have not achieved pre-decided glycemic targets with metformin monotherapy. Modern sulfonyl ureas are effective as an initial therapy or in combination with lifestyle modification and metformin. They may be considered or used in combination with all class of other um, medications. If we see the international task force recommend that the modern sulfonyl ureas can be uh, associated with better safety profiles. If we see our own RSSD recommendations, the, if the patient has a financial constraint, F and G, sulfonyl ureas are number one. Glycemic control after insulin in the oral medication, we know the sulfonyl ureas are the best. This, this is what I want to highlight. We have other parameters which we should consider the, you know, CKD, the heart failure, the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. But in patients who have a financial constraint, 
and those who have a glycemic status which is high and you need to control it quickly we need to consider it in the ada guidelines also if we see this the right most corner consider cost of excess our friends are mostly concentrated on the left side but all patient do not fit into you know uh, those parameters and we need to consider this cost and excess if if we see the excess to everybody in indian subcontinent would be very important in terms of having a sulfonylurea on board and if we see that the glycodynamics and glucocracy of type 2 diabetes mellitus the extra pancreatic and pleiotropic effects of modern sulfonylurea help positioning this molecule just after metformin and hb1c more than 7.4 one 7.5% at diagnosis a modern sulfonylurea can be added to the treatment for a rapid glycemic control this this has been recommended by the international task force as well and this is the same over goals of care uh, which were recommended by the ada esd consensus statement into 2022 we have to individualize the use of various molecules there are comorbidities there are you know concerns of weight loss concerns of hypoglycemia then the cost economics you know it has to be shared decision which has to be taken considering the patient individually and the holistic approach as told by my friend we we cannot just put all these molecules uh, in one perspective we have to choose judiciously and place them very importantly and indian perspective if we see even now the 59.4% asians with type 2 diabetes are using sulfonylurea and commonly used out of these is the glycolyzide 47% if we see the usage in indian scenario these are the second most common uh, molecules oral anti diabetic molecules still used after metformin and if we are concerned about the safety of sulfonylureas then the modern sulfonylureas they stand apart uh, out of this because of their unique mode of action and they like glimepride and glycolyzide modified release they don't inhibit mitochondrial potassium atps channel so they protect and give ischemic preconditioning which is very important so the cv safety is uh, maintained there are multiple cv safety trials though they are not cv ot but they have been compared with various other molecules if we compare it with the uh, pioglitazone in tosca it it is non inferior to that molecule and carolina which is a you know trial where a uh, patients of established cardiovascular disease were there they had a type 2 diabetes of more than 5 years less than 5 years and they were on metformin as well and it was seen then the effect on 3 point mace and the 4 point mace as compared to linagliptin glimepride was non inferior and similarly if we see it was a very long trial over a period of 6 years and the despite more hypoglycemia there was no evidence of increased cardiovascular risk with glimepride and the risk of hospitalization because of heart failure was more with linagliptin as compared to uh, glimepride so we should be reassured about the cv safety of modern uh, sulfonylureas and this is the same thing the cv death non fatal mi non fatal stroke as compared to uh, linagliptin in the carolina trial and if we also see the advanced tosca it carolina all trials they they stood non inferior in terms of the cardiovascular safety Uh, with the newer sulfonylureas it was seen that they they have no risk of increased cardiovascular risk which we come into the mind uh, once we talk of sulfonylureas the advanced study which was you know the intensive arm has glycolyzide modified release had shown 10% relative risk reduction of combined macro and microvascular events mainly driven by the microvascular events but the total was less than 10% relative risk reduction and the renal safety which is also a concern these days uh, using a molecule if we see the patients who had a diabetes of less than 10 years dcct ukpds 1002 uh, gives uh, importance to sulfonylureas and more than 10 years advance and if we see the 21% relative risk reduction in nephropathy in the advance intensive arm if we see and similarly on in advance on the 5 years post follow up there was 46% overall reduction in progression progression to end stage renal disease it was more so in patients who had no ckd but patients with ckd class 1 to 2 also showed 66% relative risk reduction uh, in those subgroups in the advance uh, trial so this also showed that 65% reduction in risk of end stage renal disease and 20% patients also had reversal 
from albumin urea to normal urea albumin urea so this which is a large number if we see so renal safety also is no concern in patients who are using uh, glycolazide or glimipride in our practice if we see the weight neutrality was also there in a longer 5 years trial glycolazide mr didn't show any uh, weight gain and if we see the cost setting out of pocket expenditure diabetes care is 3 to 18% of the per capita gdp in india and the costliest medicines which patient spend on are the glucose lowering medicine and the secondly is the lipid lowering medicine and amongst those medicine if we talk about sulfonylurea in indian context would be the best medication in india approximately 80% of the patient pay out of pocket and sulfonylurea are very affordable if we see we don't get all patient with a established cardiovascular disease heart failure or ckd there would be patient who are non obese no comorbidity on metformin monotherapy still not achieving a target then probably a combination of metformin and sulfonylurea would be a you know relevant choice and we all get these kind of patients always in our clinical practice and durability of treatment also well uh, documented in the intensive arm of arm of advanced trial and low risk of hypoglycemia because they have a unique mode of action they bind to the sulfonylurea receptors for a shorter period and do not produce a secretagogue effect for a longer period so they do not cause that kind of hypoglycemia it has been seen comparing this molecule with uh, cetagliptin in ramadan also various trials have shown that the hypoglycemia events were less with glycolazide as compared to cetagliptin and there are various trials which have shown the severe hyp symptomatic hypoglycemic events were less as compared to dpp4 uh, molecules so modern sulfonylureas have a unique mode of action they effect act on the pancreatic beta cell sulfonylurea receptor 1 cause a controlled and pulse, pulsatile insulin secretion efficacy as par with other oids or better uh, efficacy and hb1c reduction uh, efficacy low risk of hypoglycemia with the newer sulfonylureas cv safety is there renal safety is there weight neutrality is there so these are an ideal choice for patients with type 2 diabetes after metformin with robust evidence based trials potent glycemic action durable glycemic action weight neutrality cardio safe cost effective so these molecules should be the choice of second line therapy always after metformin though you cannot negate the other molecules which are available but we have to pick and choose and individualize the therapy once we have a patient who has atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease heart failure or ckd yes there there are better molecules which are available but if the cost and you know availability or excess is the concern and you know that the suitability or the experience what we have with these molecules is immense we should try and use uh, these molecules thank you